I don't know everybody. I, I'm Tom Phillips from Kent. And I'm, in a sense, in Kent, I have no responsibility for the art, um, except that I have found myself as a sort of one of the three or four Yammer evangelists in the county. Um, we've probably got one of the biggest Yammer setups going with more than 2,000 people on it. Um, that doesn't mean there's 2,000 people using it. But as I say, I'm, what I wanted to, to do, um, and it'd be interesting just to whiz around and compare where people are, is, is not look at what you have to do to get it and all the battles you might have to go through in house to get it, get it set up and, and how you use it, but really look at what happens to the good and sometimes the bad when you do use it. This was my agenda, and there's some other things I had at home. Was, was, yeah, I'm sure, sure it is right. Yes, well, I'm a member of the Artist Transfer Bureau and Architecture Manager for the Mountain Council. Um, I, I favour the idea of, of trying to find collaboration tools for um, all of us working and for a little bit of creative disruption as well. Um, our younger experience at the moment is very, very limited in the sense that I, I grabbed the domain um, in December last year and did absolutely nothing wait until it happened. Um, and one of people signed up independently. Um, and from that small group, we now have less than a hundred. Uh, most of whom are centred around a handful of evangelists who happen to be in public communications and public policy and things like that. They've got their own things signed up. But what we haven't done yet is actually um, had use for Yammer that's emerged that we can say that this has shown there's lots of value. Okay. Just for those who just, just come in, um, we thought this was going to be far smaller, so thank you for coming and making it far bigger. Um, you might not thank us once we start speaking. <laughs> but that's exactly what you're going to get a chance to do. Because because it was small, I it was good to do a quick whiz round and just assess where everybody is with Yammer. Because this was a session that certainly I had in mind for people who were not so much grappling with their IT and HR functions and their comms functions about getting it, but people had got it, but were not quite yet sure where it was going to go. And I just wanted to share some experience of where a big authority with 2,000 people signed up to it thinks it's taking it, which is, which is a slightly different take on any discussion on Yammer that, that I've sat in on. So let's carry on with that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm David Rax Our experience with Yammer at the moment is there's me and three others on there okay. from the council. Um, although I'm pretty much along the lines of social evangelist and growth, it's really seeing where we can start taking up what groups we can build up. I mean, I've spoken to Helen already today, and we will start connecting those groups up yeah. outside of the organisation. from the Morris County Council, but we've had it for, well, we've had the council for, for a couple of years and it's basically just growing lively. It started off as a bit of a, an IT kind of experiment. Well, we're not like a master services team, we're part of customer services, but it came from our IT people. And like I say, it's just, it's just kind of, it's just, it started off, I guess, as a, as a, as a way for IT to talk about the different strategies, application strategies and concepts. Um, but it's it's grown and it's there's no kind of leadership to it. There's no there's no administration, HR are finally cottoning on I think to its existence. But it, it's it's an interesting one because this is it's just been just been allowed to, to, to grow naturally, which is quite Did I leave my notes lying around? I didn't read them. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, 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 I guess I just want to find out what yeah, I think that's And we'll come back to that because really, uh, I think that's kind of my view, common experience. Mm. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm working on a project to um, get councils to work together to um, save money on what they spend things on, so like you know, highway maintenance, yeah. social care, lots of things like that. And that requires councils to work together in a way they never have, and there are no existing channels to allow them to work together. So it's been suggested that Yammer might be a tool to help them do this. But we haven't got any further than that, so I'm quite interested to know how we actually get people to do it. I think I want to pick that up. Okay. We've got some experience. Well, something in the moment, Shaggy, 
Um, I was, I think it was three years ago, I signed up for the monmouthshire.gov.uk account, and the first person who claims it opens it. Um, and for, I think, a good part of a year, there was only like half a dozen of us playing it, with it. Um, and then the moment came, and forgive me those who were in the cloud session, I'd repeat myself a little bit, but um, uh, we made a case to the chief executive and senior management team that one of our problems, massive problems, is the internal fragmentation we suffer because of the hierarchical directorate structures that we have and people not talking to each other. And we just pointed out the fact that Yammer doesn't understand internal boundaries and doesn't respect them, therefore to get people talking across the boundary. And that sort of initiated uh, instruction from on high saying, people, this is a useful tool. Yeah. And then our membership went whoosh. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm the monster as well. Um, I suppose I'm coming from a point of view where I just love it because it's allowed me to do things I wouldn't have done without Yama. And ideas keep coming through for people say I've got this problem, and then Yama seems to be the answer to lots of it. So I can go into uh, into some examples of that later if you want. Yeah. And you run a community? Yeah, and there's a community that's um, public sector social media group. It's just a great place to share your policy on social media or just have a chat or ask a question that you might feel a bit stupid asking on Twitter in front of your mates. It's kind of a nice, it's friendly, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep in there. I work for Walsall Council. Um, <coughs> we started having this um, system of briefing come from the Chief Executive about six months or so ago, I think. Um, so he gets all the senior managers together and delivers a verbal, sort of, here's the top things that are going on. And the idea is then those managers go away and cascade it down to the teams. <coughs> Parallel with that, they set up um, a forum online for people to comment on items on the core brief. And it was very, it was so formal. Um, and it was, here's the executive director, you said this, what are your comments? And everyone was kind of, not putting my name on there. <laughs> um, so then someone in the comms team had heard about Yammer and Walmart in the US and so on. And so they just quietly didn't ask anyone, just signed up and sent the invitations to a few people. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it just went viral. Yeah. Um, and I think it's kind of peaked and it's it's reached yeah. a bit of a plateau now. Yeah. Um, but it is, it's a safe environment really for people to talk to each other. Yeah. But one of the things I found interesting was um, some of the fear um, of, of saying things and putting your name to them. And somebody commented on, I can't remember the detail, but it was like, but what about if a councillor reads this? Let's come back to that, because again, you've been reading my scripts. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Lorna Parsons. I actually work with um, architects who um, have successfully obtained funding from the Technology Strategy Board to develop a platform to support neighbourhood planning. Um, now, that's, that's not directly related to this, but it just so happens that as part of the work that we're doing, we've started to use YAM as a way to communicate, because I'm based in Birmingham, they're based in London, and we use it as a collaborative tool, so oh. we have some experience of it, but I'm interested to learn more. Okay. I'm Tim, I work for a small charity called Involve, so, um, not, well, I'd be interested to hear whether sort of any of your experiences may transfer to such a small organisation. I'm also quite interested in how we could potentially use it to engage with kind of other organisations like yeah. yourselves. So we're kind of, um, and we work in public participation, yeah. so we want to kind of, we need a continuous feed of ideas of what's going on outside and also feeding our ideas out, so I'm quite interested in that. I think you'll get something from that. I think that's largely untilled ground, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, yeah, great. Fran? Um, I work for Hackney Council and um, alongside my day job I've been asked by our assistant chief executive to do a piece of work to help build a feeling of one team in our new team of 70 people which has been created through a restructure out of people who used to work all in different places. And um, I've been kind of spending a lot of time with people brainstorming ideas about things we could do from social events to information sharing to training, kind of grassroots training sessions. and. Um, and then I came across Yammer about six days ago <laughs> and think it might be the answer to all my problems. So that's okay, why I'm here. We're, we're trying to prove that for you, or disprove it. <laughs> um, ben from Cole. I think we've had sort of a false start from County Yammer. Somebody started it two years ago and then there was a bit of interest, but nobody who started it, I don't think they really understood it, which meant we had that viral take up, but nothing happened. And now there's a bit more going on, but all those people who've already joined up are. Kind of done for most because 
they'll switch it off and they won't think about it and they can't be re-invited. So it's, it's a complete it's rubbish for us. <laughs> but there's about 400 people who've got so accounts on you risk it. And there are eight people rattling around on it. Um, well, Mike Cattell, I'm a corporate ICT worker in Wolverhampton. My experience of the Yammer is that I signed up for an account and it was great in the early days um, and I used it a little bit. But then more people that joined and we haven't got a massive number of it's about 100 or something like that. Um, um, some of my earlier experiences were that people, customers and other colleagues were using it as another route to get in to try and get you to do stuff and my experience was it was like having like an extra mailbox and three extra phones on my desk so I decided to opt out yeah. and so I don't check it because I it's just an, a, yet another channel for people asking questions and trying to get stuff done so I'm not, I don't want to be too but negative I think that's, about no, it but, but I think that's a legit experience and within the team I'm working I've seen that too. Well, I've already um, had to um, tell a couple of people that they should um, log requests with our service desk for getting pieces of work done, not coming to me directly via Yammer. Yeah. You know, and it would have been the same thing if they'd have phoned you. And on other occasions, I've had to say to people, you were talking about something that was quite big and you should be talking to your account manager. So, and in the end, I just so, I switched it off. We've got a really, this is a small but really representative group. Kent was an elected member. Oh, I'm not elected. You're an officer, sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I don't know. That's worrying. I'll chat to you about that later. That's worrying. No, I'm Kent from Barnsley, and now uh, I've had a, a bit of a brief about digital innovation for a few years. And uh, last year, I led a project, not a young project, uh, we used a product called Social Text, uh, which some people might be familiar with. Pretty similar to Yammer, but it has added functionality. And we call it uh, Barnsley Buzz. And uh, we set that project off with the aspiration of getting 500 users on there within six months. We actually got 1,200. Um, long story cut short, uh, we closed it down in March uh, because we couldn't afford to fund it. Um, it's quite expensive. Uh, but we've got quite a lot of learning through there. Uh, and I've seen uh, some resonance, resonance with what you were saying really in terms of the, the impacts on it because social text is so feature rich, lots of signals, instant messaging, all of this, that actually it was communication overload. Yes. Um, people were just saying, look, you know, as, a, as, a, as an organisation, what's, what's our preferred corporate communication channel? You know, is it email? Is it yes. signals in social text? Is it microblogs in social text? Is it instant messaging? What, you know, what, what, what on earth is it? Yeah. Uh, having said that, we did see some huge value in terms of the collaborative workspace uh, and some of the low level cross silo, cross departmental connections. Putting a value to some of that, quite difficult. Uh, but interesting yeah. to see. Yeah. Interesting to see. Yeah. Um, so, Catherine Harold, like we, we use um, uh, we use Yamba Public Eye, which there's about 25 of us, and we introduced it. Um, to increase internal transparency and also we're all out about a lot and we wanted to have a better sense of where everybody is and what you're up to. Um, and speaking as the chief executive, I also wanted to be, I was very aware that I was spending more time out of the office than in the office, which is not uncommon for a chief executive, um, and I wanted to make sure the team had a better awareness of what I was doing and that they had a, a constant sense of access. Um, I think the other, and the other, and I think it works for that. But I think that it requires a consistency of behaviour from the chief exec. So if I'm busy, then I tend to forget to do it, and that's bad. And so you need to put the pull mechanism into it in some way. I, I need more than an internal compulsion, um, and <laughs> I need proper compulsion. Um, the, the other thing I'm interested in is whether or not Yammer, but more generally, whether or not Yammer reflects organisational culture or whether or not Yammer changes organisational culture and whether or not there's a period of adoption where it moves from reflecting to changing and that your problem perhaps is that <coughs> your Yammer experience reflected the organisation and that unless you're thinking about a change process you're not going to get the Yammer effect, the positive Yammer effect that we want to get. This is terrific. Can I, can I go on? Sorry. I'm not just behind the camera. Um, I'm John Popham, I'm an independent consultant who does all sorts of stuff with social technology. Um, 
I've used Yammer for a number of years, a number of organisations I've worked with, including we use it in our society, which is the um, grassroots response to the big society, and we run that quite effectively to communicate within the um, sort of steering committee members. I've also um, recently been trying to implement a Yammer network in, I've, um, I'm working with some tobacco control alliances, which are multi-agency partnerships, many local authority and NHS, and I presented to them on various social technology tools they might want to use, and they settled on wanting to use Yammer to communicate with each other, which was where my nightmare started, really. Trying to get people from different organisations all signed up to the same Yammer network, which we sort of got around it in the end. But the biggest things I find are people who um, just are not social, really. Um, well, the two things, they're just not social, so they don't bother to use it, don't see why they should use it. But the other thing is people who can't load software on their own machines and therefore can only use the you know, website and can't use the desktop tool, which I think takes away a lot of the functionality and also takes away a lot of the reminders to use it. And I'd be interested on where people have, um, you know, if people actually successfully implemented a Yammer network where people can't load the desktop client. So what, what I want to do, and, and we've got a good length of time to do it, um, I work in what in some senses is, is the biggest social experiment going, it's called King County Council, because it's big, you know, um, I forget how many thousand staff, but anything anything in in local government terms, if you take it to Kent, is a big deal. 84 county councillors, uh, that sort of stuff. And I've said it already, more than 2,000 people using Yammer. Um, I brainstormed some thoughts about our Yammer experience. So I'm just going to sort of pick almost at random from the notes to try and chime in with some of the things that have been said to make sure that, if you like, everybody goes away with a party pack. To, to today, because I think what I've picked up from just you know your shared experiences is there's some, there's some common ground. As I said to the few who were here initially, I don't have a responsibility for Yama in Kent except as one of about half a dozen people in the authority who see themselves sort of as a Yama evangelist. We use it all the time. We've been asked internally to trigger some debates. Occasionally we get asked to temper some debates and, and that sort of stuff. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm a super user, I guess. Um, I think I sit at the top of, happily sit at the top of both the number of posts and the number of likes. <coughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm quite chuffed to sit at the top of both of those because I could easily be at the top of the number of posts and bottom of the number of likes and, and that wouldn't work. We had a history with things like this a good few years ago, we had on our intranet a discussion forum, um, and it went horribly wrong because there were some, basically there were some prats around who were using it for the wrong sort of thing, everybody was posting in their own name, they were using it during the working day when they should have been getting on the real work, um, they were in some cases slagging each other off, and the corporate director for that area of work closed it down. And for a few years, there was a bad smell around about discussion forums generally. At the same time, as things like Facebook and Twitter began to grow, and I think there was a bit of a feeling that in-house we were missing something which other people had got access to um, out of house. Um, and, and we had the same experience. Those who've said about viral growth and well-kept secret, we did that. A few techies started it. And it was a bit of a basis for techie discussions to begin with. But it had such potential that a lot of people signed up and said, well, I'll keep this, you know, I'm going to take part one day when the discussions get good, I might chip in. And there was an awareness that actually you had to go sort of cloud seeding. You had to actually get in there and put some discussions in for the sake of starting discussions. So I and one of two others actually started coming up with, with things that we thought would get discussions going. We were right, but what we learned was that you didn't ever, and I don't think you ever do with Yammer, get really long-term discussions going. And, and what we found is that people buy into it um, variously. Not everybody will ever get it. Um, People who get social media generally, in some cases, don't get Yammer because they don't want to spend all day debating their job and everything, you know, come up a slide. They actually do want to go home and get it out of the system and get back with the kids. 
Um, but at lunchtime, all they want is fresh air and a sandwich. They don't want to sit in front of the computer um, sending yammer messages to college. So there's, 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 there's those cultural things. But we find that you get a lot of threads, and then you'll maybe get half a dozen, a dozen posts, and then the thread will naturally die, you would think. We've got one great long-term thread running at present, um, which is about the kids who skateboard on the flat area outside County Hall and, and what a disgrace they are and how they're going to kill somebody sooner or later and um, you know, uh, uh, how somebody should do something about it, all that typical sort of stuff. And, and one of the things you realise is your staff, particularly when you've got the staff the size of ours, is they're a very, very representative cross-section of the public. That you've got real people working for your organisation and they raise real issues just in the same way that if you go to a public meeting you get all those issues raised. And the blind skateboarders is probably the longest thread we've got at present. But as I say, you get the impression that some threads die. My view, having just dipped a toe in the water on it, is that more often than not those discussions just go offline. They carry on amongst the really the people who are really enthusiastic about it, they're the people who will then say, well, you know, it's silly, we can get together over coffee and talk this through, why should we keep posting notes to each other? Particularly if the thread is a debate between only three, four, five people. And so a lot goes offline, but by the same token, what you get with the other is things that were existing offline come online. People have a discussion and realise they've reached as far as they can amongst the three or four or five of them and they want to try and get a wider view, or they've come up with something that they think everybody should have a concern about, and they say on a Yama thread, hey, we've been talking about this, what do other people think? And you get, you get that dynamic. And I don't know that you just get that with a big Yama group, but you certainly get it with ours, where as I say, I think we're looking at about 2,000 people using it now. Um, we're very, very aware of the lurkers, um, we're in a reorganisation situation now, which has done huge things for the number of people who are signing up. And we're getting, you know, a dozen people every lunchtime signing up, taking out new accounts, and, and then deciding, either using the default and following everybody, which is a bit of a nightmare, um, or they're choosing to follow people. And we're getting this big explosion, but they're not all posted. Can I just ask you something before yeah. this point? Yeah. Are you, you're talking about lunchtime and yeah. after work. Yeah. People can't use it throughout the day. They can use it any time they like. And we are constrained, like a lot of authorities, because it's set about the desktop and not being able to download the desktop because the machines are tied down. But people who can be bothered, if you like, to use their own laptop or their iPad or their iPhone to download um, the, the, the version of the people who are using it at, at all sorts of times. We had a really interesting thread running about the times of day that people were posting. Um, I was getting people saying, what on earth are you doing sitting up at three in the morning posting on Yammer, when I really wasn't. And it led to the discovery that the default time on our Yammer system was Hawaii Central yeah. Pacific time. <laughs> and, if, and if you've got the same thing, do check that. Because, you know, people... That might be course, we're going to change it. No, we, we, we variously changed it. Um, but it was an interesting thread yeah. that, that we were able to use and say, well, actually, does it really matter when people, you know, does it, do you have to do this sort of thing? Um, in, in, in the daytime. Um, can, can I just say, um, have we got enough people here to <coughs> organise a march on Yammer HQ oh. about why they've broken the desktop, desktop app? Because the last two versions of the desktop app have not allowed you to use multiple accounts. No, which, is, which is a bloody nightmare as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I can. I've still got... I, I, you I must start the old one. I use it on a laptop very seldom now, so it probably is an old one. Hmm. On a desktop... No, I use it on a, a very recently purchased Mac um, on an iPad. Oh, I think, it, I think it's the window, it's, I think it's yeah, it's the Windows, Windows one. Yeah. It's the Windows the one. The Mac one's I, okay. I belong to three accounts and I can switch seamlessly between them. Yeah, well you can't on the latest Windows desktop. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the really powerful thing we touched on here was the ability of people with like minds to get together. And I think the ability of organisations to take something like um, Yammer and a silo culture and actually cut across the silo culture and say that even within your silos, you've got areas of interest. We, we've, got, we've got a huge number of groups. Um, they either get together for a purpose and then die. I, I'm not quite sure whether there's any ability to take to, to kill them off. I think you can kill a group. The one thing you can't do in grammar at being Yammer is take a private group and make it public. I think that's still an impossibility somehow. 
But we've got an awful lot of cross-cutting groups. Um, change champions we've got in the organisation, and dozens of other things like that. Um, we've, we've also got a lot of things that are used in Yammer to draw people in, um, encouraging the staff club to put its offers on Yammer and draw people who um, might not, well, they might have a sort of fear of these sorts of things. Do the, you have a stated objective of getting people to Yammer? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And that was, that was, that was what worked. That, that people didn't feel that they were signing up to a thing. They were just curious and came into it. Um, and have either decided it's not for them. Like several groups, where they've decided it's not for them because they're just not that sort of person. They've decided that it's the money nuisance. Particularly if originally they signed up to email notifications <coughs> and they're getting an email notification every time anybody sneezes and they're saying, don't want this, cut it up the inbox and everything. And then you've got the people who do get it and are either making a lot of use of it or, or are not. So, uh, you know, there isn't a typical user. Um, there would be some people who would sign up to it if you said, this is for the following things. Um, we, in my division, 99 people going through a really tough reorganisation process at the moment, going to get us down to 59 posts. Um, the first time I think we've had a must-have Yammer group, that it was compulsory. It, everybody, three line went, you will join this Yammer group. And there were still 20, 30 people who had to be told, yes, you really will. Because even in those circumstances of a reorganisation where the probability was that that was the only place that information they really needed for their future was going to be posted. They still couldn't bring themselves to do it in the social media. Oh, they left them, you know, you're fine with them, you're not team. I don't think anybody's, I don't think anybody's, I don't think anybody's ever done the research about what held them back. But why, um, but why was it made compulsory? Why was Yama made a compulsory channel? Because it was decided that it had speed and within the organisation existing critical mass. If we were back in the early days where it was still growing virally and it hadn't got a status and we hadn't got a chief exec who used it, I don't think it would have happened. Um, we've had a number of things that have come together. The first big reorganisation we had this year for the whole authority was 1st of April and it was the first time that senior management signed into it. They were probably lurking some of them and, and the thing we got called the Talk to the Top initiative which is great, uses it. So senior managers are there doing the sort of I'm online, come and talk to me stuff, the accessibility stuff. They're also doing the walking the corridors and seeing real people and showing their faces. And, and somebody is collecting questions which will then be answered on Yammer. So you begin to get um, a sort of this is the way we do things around here culture. Is, is, there, is there a conscious, because I'm very aware of what you said about kind of, um, uh, get, and one of our motivations was get crap out of your inbox. Yeah. And not crap, but some of, the, some of the passing around conversations, there are some conversations which have a moment and then they're gone. Mm -hmm. And they don't need, I don't need to have that conversation in my inbox when I next check mm -hmm. my inbox. Mm -hmm. And it was trying to come up with a way where we could still have and capture those conversations, but then, but we were getting the rubbish off. Off, off email, which mm -hmm. didn't it didn't need all the active back and forth. Is, yeah. it, is anybody thinking about it in that kind of like conversational versus transactional? You know, emails I transactional, yeah, 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 conversational. Yeah, absolutely. But for me, it was just volume, and yeah. I was getting the impression that um, if Yammer had never existed or we never took it up, then the questions that were coming into me via that route wouldn't have been asked. These weren't people who would have bothered phoning me or um, written to me, they, they just thought, well, here's another, he's on here, I'm going to ask him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I've not been aware of that as an issue, but I think when you get to a certain critical mass, and it's not necessarily a numerical critical mass of bodies in the organisation, but it's a critical mass of conversations that are going on, that the transactional and the conversational stuff <coughs> sit, sit quite neatly side by side. Um, I think we're using it much more for conversation. Um, there's a transaction in the sense that with reorganisations, people will ask a question for which they want an answer because it will help inform what they do for their future. But most of the stuff we've got is, is conversational um, and, as I said earlier, quite short term. That the conversation comes along, 
blooms and dies or goes offline or is offline, comes online, has its day when everybody contributes to it. Um, you know, and there is there is probably a life cycle, at least on the research I think on this. But what it means, what it means is that you've got a number of different things happening at any given time. Um, within you, you've got your groups working, you've got your new people coming along, taking the first dip of the toe into social media. Um, we're saying about Yama, and I've said it at a couple of previous um, home conferences, that it's probably quite a good area for people to learn how to do social media. There's sort of, we had this theory that people could come and do Yammer in the nice safe environment of Yammer and then go out into the hard world of Twitter. Yeah. I know, I know where that's happened. I think the jury's still out with me. I don't know that that works. I know a few cases where that's happened. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, I've talked about it and I've never actually seen it happen. Is it, is it about degrees of publicness, though? Because mm -hmm. you're, you're being a little bit more public than you were previously, but within a trusted environment, you know, within a safe environment, depending on your organisation. And then, and then Twitter, you're being totally public, and so it can just for me, there's, a, there's an element here about changing behaviour yeah. to, to to assume publicity is a good thing. And you're like, why don't I have this conversation but, in public? Because someone may benefit. But, but I'll give you an example that works in the other way, Catherine, and, it, and, and it's happened since your public eye user group. Um, what was it? Three, four weeks yeah. ago, um, went to Catherine's public eye user group with a colleague who that day. Had this sort of, the, they had they had their Damascene Road experience and they suddenly get social media and, and, and it, it's a fabulous experience. But they had the idea of taking something which a lot of authorities do on Twitter, which is publish agendas for meetings and, and even webcast material. And we had Carl Sopraft from Kirtley's there as a, a, yeah. to speak on the day. And 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 my colleague Angela said, well, hang on a second, we don't get this in-house, so why don't we take stuff, let's forget Twitter for a while, let's post it on Yammer. And the effect in-house of saying, okay, here's a webcast for your elected members, the people that you're feeding, that you probably haven't had the time to go and see, or here's papers for a meeting which you probably haven't had circulated because you don't get agendas anymore. The effect was huge. Um, in terms of people, just in some cases with Yama saying, I like this. And I mean, the, yeah. the good that that did my colleague in terms of um, just nice feeling that she was doing a really valued job of work was fabulous. But we had people inside who say, gosh, didn't know it worked that way. Or, you know, is this really the standard that we publish agendas? And the in-house game that we had from taking something which probably already was in the public and turning it inside was huge. The, the tradition, as I say, is that you grow it in, in house and things like the Yammer, and then you feel brave enough to take it out. But actually, it does work the other way too. Mm -hmm. And I say that of all of three or four weeks' experience, but I'm excited by it. And, and what that will do, I think, is that, that there will be other things where you can say, well, okay, you're seeing this on Yammer, but actually, this happens in the wide world. Or you start saying to people, there are other people using Yammer. You can link up the nodes, and, and Helen, you probably want to say more about your experience of, of the group that you set up, which I think is just fabulous. It was my first experience of even realising that you could tie Yama together in that way. Yeah, and it's not fabulous because the people on there are great music, so it wouldn't be quite everyone just learned from not doing anything. But thinking, looking back on that, on what you were just talking about there, we had an example where a librarian put the um, the library's newsletter on Yammer as a PDF. And everyone's saying, this is great. And I said, have you thought about doing this as a blog? Because I can't share it. I can't share it on our Twitter network or anything like that. And she was like, great idea. How do I do it? A couple of posts, and suddenly we've got something that was really interesting to a bit much bigger audience. Ready and waiting. It, it's just about the fact she didn't know, she didn't think about it being a blog. So it wasn't even that the fear was there. Mm -hmm. It was just someone else looking at that saying, well, why don't you try that? But with the, um, with the communities, they're brilliant because you can start to collaborate a bit more. And mm -hmm. it's, the reason I set up the public sector social media one was I was seeing a lot of kind of conversation on Twitter. I was aware of the fact that a lot of my colleagues don't know how to use Twitter. So why are they, you know, how can they get involved in that conversation without knowing the, the mechanics of how to use it? And Yammer is quite easy to use. It's just a case of getting their email addresses and, and sending it on. Once they are in, they can invite whoever they want, so it kind of grew itself. Um, 
one of my favourite ways of using animals, uh, someone from our foster care team was saying that foster carers want a bulletin board and they want to be able to have posts about keeping up with what's going on. And they'd spend money on developing some form of online, they were calling it a bulletin board, God knows what they were looking at. But I would say, well, how about they am a community? Because you can invite them all in, it's clothes, they can talk to each other. We trust them not to talk about specific details about, you know, slagging off the kids, don't look after that one, if they're, right. you know, they're not going to do that. But what they were doing is meeting each other quarterly, and that's the only time they got together in a room and, and met each other. But now they're all chatting to each other and they're having picnics yep. and they are sharing experiences. One of them said the other day something like, my child's sleepwalking, I don't know how to handle it because yep. I don't, you know, I've not experienced this before. Someone came in and said, I had a kid like that before and, and this is what I did and it triggered a debate. But it's not really about the council anymore. It's not about us with the bulletin board saying, here's the latest bit of information you need. We do it. But also they question what we do. So our, our head of social services put up a consultation, a consultation document. And the foster carers were right in there questioning it. And that's brilliant. It's lots of different things. It's yeah. social, but it's also having a little bit more of a say of what's going on and yeah. having access to things they wouldn't necessarily but, see. So can you tell us a little bit more about this sort of connected community sense? I'm not quite yeah, I mean, with that. It's, it's just the, the different forms. So you've got a group which would be an internal community of interest, and yeah. this is just the same, but you can invite anyone with any email address into that community. Right, okay. So they can all talk to each other. So is it always by invite only, or can someone knock on the door? You can invite. It's invite, it's yeah. Once you're in, you can invite anyone you want. You can yeah. open up the group so that anyone who's in can, can bring in. So how would I get like. access to you? I could invite you, or yeah. anyone else in the group could invite you. Yeah, so it's just a case of <laughs> knowing the email address. And, I wish there was a way of letting someone just join, oh, yeah. just get in there, yeah. But as it is, it's a part of the trust though, is the fact that there's a personal reference. Yeah. Everybody in that yeah. group is connected by one degree. And, yeah. And that's, that's, yeah. Is, that, that is quite a Yeah, and I think it's made people a little bit more kind of able to talk about things in there. Because yeah. there are a little, you know, this, this is a problem I've just had on Facebook with a resident saying this. We know that that's not going to get out into the press and suddenly it becomes something that it wasn't meant to be, it was just asking for help. Um, yeah, so the community function is a, a really cheap way to collaborate and share, share documents. Yeah. I put up my social media policy that was kind of linked with various bits of other bits, other people's policies. But I said, what do you think of it? And no one said, this is shit. And that was great. If, if anything, <laughs> it's just validation to, yeah. to know that I'm not doing anything that's yeah. majorly wrong. We, we've heard that. I, I went to talk about what I do for a living with um, the community wardens that we have in Kent, which is sort of one down the food chain from PCSOs, if you like. Um, and somebody in that meeting said, well, while you're here, um, I do Yammer, and I see your face on Yammer regularly. Tell us about Yammer. And I talked to the community wardens, you know, they're all sitting there in their green fleeces, um, you know, sort of paramilitary arm of the KCC. And, and they... they they got it straight away, but what they didn't get straight away was the internal value. Because I talked about the grouping, the, the community, and they said, does that mean that if there's a group of community more than somewhere else, we could share with them? Yeah, you can. They didn't find a group of community more than somewhere else to share with or they weren't looking. But what they did get was the internal group that everybody else gets as the first step on the other. They got their, their in-house share. Um, and, and got this sort of closed group, which I suspect they will use for intelligence. You know, we've got shoplifting happening in Seven Oaks, um, probably heading towards that. You know, that sort of stuff. I don't know whether they'll name names, I don't know how secure they feel it's going to be. But as I said, a lot of stuff I find in Yama doesn't, doesn't grow in a linear way, and sometimes it's counterintuitive. And, and, and that's a sort of sort of counterintuitive thing. But one thing I do want to mention was elected members in the Yammer. Sorry, I'm blind you. Um, <laughs> but elected members in the Yammer, we never excluded them. But elected members in Kent have a kent.gov.uk email address like all of us do. And they were able to sign up. We've got one or two who were quite good with social media, but they tend to be twin hatters and triple hatters who were doing it at district council and town council rather than county council level. But we've we're just having an eye-opener experience where a couple of members who are sort of quite good, and there's an opposition member involved, um, who are quite 
social media literate, even if they're not active users, have found themselves together running one of our select committees. But it's a select committee about, it's called the student journey, but it's actually about how young people become young adults and what happens. And they've suddenly realized that with sort of 4,000 staff, they've got a wonderful closed audience within Yammer that they can ask questions of. And, and they will start using it to ask questions. What I am aware of, though, is that we've got lurkers, and we've got the leader of the opposition lurking, and trying to get, I mean, Catherine, we had a, a conference, um, 15, a power 15 minutes trying to get her on board, and I think we succeeded. They're lurking, and as yet, they haven't got a bad word to say for it, because they would have said so if they had. They would have started posting and saying, hey, you got it all wrong. And there's no politics going on. But what you're getting is, is a realisation that in, in a big audience, the, in a big authority, the critical mass has been achieved where you can start using Yammer for things that when you were using it with you know, 100, 150 people, I mean, some of your equivalents of 20 people, that sort of thing, you can't do it because you haven't got the, the critical mass for it. The other thing I should mention, because you know, I've been involved with it recently, is Yammer has some shortcomings. I, I, I'm following on Twitter a guy who is part of the Yammer development team in San Francisco. Um, if you want to give him pressure, his name's Samuel Such, S-U-T-C-H, and I think he's at Sam Such or something like that on, on Twitter. Um, he doesn't post very often, but he is well connected. And I've been raising with him some of the, the stuff about visual impaired use of, of Yammer, because actually they haven't cracked it. Um, that it's a sufficiently new and niche product that this whole area of accessibility hasn't really come knocking on their door. And our HR people said to the blind guy that we have who is a senior officer in, 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 in our um, equalities, equalities team, that they said, well, of course, you can get all your email feeds and you can follow up on your reader. But he's sparky enough to say, no, I can't, I can't join groups, I can't choose who to follow, because all the menu structure and everything else like that doesn't work on his reader. And I think, just health warning, um, we haven't yet found completely adequate ways around that that give visually impaired people the same functionality. They can get functionality, we can get to the point where they're not actually being disadvantaged, and this guy is in the same reorganisation situation that I'm in, but you, there is as yet with Yama no um, equality of opportunity. And, and that's something which I think the Yama team should be given, my view, should be given a hard time on, because it, 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 it's overdue. So, you know, we, we've got, as I say, all these things happening because we're big. And what was really good was, was hearing you at different stages in some cases, or with parallel experiences in, in, in smaller authorities. Because it, it comforts me to think that we're not abnormal from being big. And I hope it sort of comforts you in terms of thinking that, that what you're doing is not because, not because there's anything inherently wrong with Yammer. It's just, I think, where you are on the road. Um, what time are we finishing? Is it about now? We can, we can sort of throw it out for a couple of minutes. Uh, anything we've missed? Can I just ask, not randomly, but about those who are represented in councils, how many of you, or how big a percentage of your staff have got accounts on email addresses? We've got about 15,000. 15%. Yeah. 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 It, I don't know, Eddie's exploring how it might be made more mandatory, so it yeah. becomes far more part of how the council does this aspect of our... Yeah. I'm still yeah. wary of the mandatory bit. We're, we're doing it for our reorganisation, and I think we've seen that some people, as I say, you won't drag them even kicking and screaming to it, so mandatory won't work. It'll change, it'll change the dynamic of it, and, and it is, this is something that will never mushroom and it'll never grow in a linear sense. It'll grow, plateau, something will happen, there'll be a perception that you need to buy in, it'll change. Um, and you know, 
five, ten years' time, somebody ought to go back and map it. But I, I, I'm wary of mandatory studies. I mean, I think you've got a really good point there, which is about access, and you're, you're, you're actually, it's a, it's a digital inclusion problem yeah. within yeah. your own organisation. But I, I, I just, I really, my observation is, it's about how safe do people feel yes. about being open, yes. and that's that's really the thing. So, how safe do people feel, and do they do they actually think their colleagues have anything to offer them? Yes. And it's a terrible yeah, thing to say. No, oh, yes. so we it's have, the whole time. Yeah. I, some people I've encouraged to join Yama. Um, I get to train with a couple of um, people who work in the museum the education team. They're desperate, they've been trying for a year to get the website to reflect what they actually do rather than what it actually <laughs> says they do. And they were very long and protracted kind of discussions. And then there was this rumour that there was going to be WordPress because IT wanted to sell WordPress sites to the schools. So that, you know, um, and she got she heard about this and put a Yammer message saying, Oh, I've heard this has happened, can you tell me more about it? Someone else jumped in and said, Well, no, that's a tenant, isn't it? Demo, it's a thing. It's you know, there's no there's no guarantees about it, and she now feels like she could never contribute anything again because someone else has come in and just stamp it down in it. I think that's a very common thing with social media, yeah. and you know, you get people saying, "Oh, you know nothing," yeah. and it puts it puts new people and I think to be in the telly. And, and I think the way around it, and I'm just beginning to explore it, is blogging. Um, you you're not entering a conversation there. You're just saying, "I'm just going to share with you something I've done, somewhere I've been." And we've got a community engagement group on Yama where a few people, because even in my own team, some people don't get it and won't do it, where we're able to say, okay, we're not going to have a conversation here. We're just going to share with you for what it's worth. You know, it may be worth nothing to you this time. It may be worth everything. A meeting we went to, a group of people we met, a discussion we had, where nobody can actually stamp down on you in that sense, because all you're saying is, well, this is what happened. But you're not actually encouraging a discussion, but you're just putting within Yammer something which people might be interested in reading. And if you like, it's the honey trap. Um, for some people, you're drawing them in and saying, well, that was interesting, and somebody writes in a good or amusing way, or I could do that. Well, I think that actually throws up one of the limitations of Yammer. We should say, we're probably, I imagine, all of us using the free version. We are astronomical. Yes, so there are, there are problems about claiming the data then and deleting people, particularly if we've all lost mm -hmm. hundreds of people from our from our staff. Um, and Yammer doesn't facilitate blogging like might no, not blogging, blog. blogging. What you're doing is slightly longer, 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 longer posts, yeah. but it doesn't. It's it's a bit it's a bit clunkier. Whereas it would be much better to have something that allows you as organisations yeah. to be sharing that and to be. To be more socialised. But actually, in house blogging is the thing. But now we're, we're straying into uh, knowledge management tools, which is a slightly different. And, and I think that mm -hmm. actually, you know, the knowledge management people are sort of looking at it with a, ooh, actually, could this do what we've been trying to do, which is to share and service organisational knowledge? Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's an imperfect tool for that I'll, because I'll, it's a network tool. I think it's not a knowledge management there's tool. There's a thing we get to before we get to knowledge management, and I, I, I agree. The knowledge managers in, in many authorities will look at will look at loose blogging and they'll say, well, I can't count how many bums on seats there and all that sort of stuff. They won't like it. But actually, the whole area of freedom to blog in house and talk about what you're doing and comment on the policies that you're doing it under and things like that is a big issue. And, 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 and the sort of perception of safety and the fact that you're seen sometimes as sticking your head up above the parapet you do it is a big thing yeah. and in that sense Yammer is quite a safe way to do it because all you're saying is here's something I did you might like to know and you're not actually saying I thought I'd sit down and write your little essay now about what I think about something. I think there is an issue about the, the functionality of the free version because I asked a question on Twitter the other day I think you helped me with that Ben but um, about um, I was trying to deal with this issue of people not being able to download the desktop version and I was trying to say can you get the RSS feed of posts into Outlook you know, which would be a really good function. And it turns out you can, yeah. but only in the paid version. Mm. 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 But don't you know, that is how they're really living. Yeah. yeah. She says, like, the cap is running dog, she really is. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody yeah. has to pay it's for it. Yeah. There's also then the other fact of, like, we just recently bought the Microsoft 2000. The server album, yes, I remember three years ago, it was Bridgeway. And the one thing they've switched off 
It's the RSSV. Okay, alright, yeah. I didn't realise yeah. that. And it's like, <laughs> well, number one, how have you done it? Which is really interesting, I'd like to. But then, why have you just taken away a whole load of functionality? Mm. It's Richard, don't let me just be an honest people. I mean, with one of my other hats, I am uh, partly responsible for locking down our uh, test tubs. Um, and one of the consequences of that is that when I, I started to go uh, using them, I deliberately did not ask for my desktop to be open, but I've always had the most clamped down desktop in the authority mm -hmm. as a matter of principle. So if you can do it, it is a problem using the right version, I agree. And at, and at home, on my personal version, uh, is the, the, the new and single account version of the, uh, the client. But you can still do it. Yeah, the, the problem I've got is that these are people who, whose only access is on their desktop PC in their office. And they just won't bother even checking it unless it pops up in the corner of the screen. I, 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 yeah. I just log in the wall and leave it at the um, explorer sitting in the background and occasionally look at it. How many of these people would download it to a smartphone if they knew they could? Most of them haven't got smartphones. Okay. <laughs> okay. But even you know, if they have, would they feel that they've got the freedom to do it? Would they be sufficiently motivated? I find, well, that's a, this is a bigger what, issue opening up here. There's a lot of these people who feel, why should I, even if I have a smartphone, why should or I use my personal equipment for work purposes? You know? see, see, that's where I think it's like, are you swimming against the tide? And I look at using something like Basecamp. Basecamp has got fantastic email integration, yeah. which means they have to go to a website once, and the rest of the time it's all in their inbox, and they're just as networked, it's just as collaborative but they don't have this extra arse of another tool apart from that yeah. one transaction. Yeah. And that, that seems to me kind of like, mm, you know, life is too short to try and make people to do stuff <laughs> they really don't want to do. It. They can't, you know, there's genuine barriers to doing it. Yeah. But I don't know, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Camp Rupia, I think it's great. I'm going to be tasky and look at the clock and say, thank you, that was better than I th sort of hoped it would be. That's not because I had low expectations on anything other than numbers, but thank you. Um, enjoy the next bit, which is the last one of the day.